I talked recently about marking gauges and how to make one. In that discussion, I described a you know, traditional marking gauge that has a conical pin and then a knife gauge which has a blade that you would use for cutting across the grain or marking across the grain. The third type of gauge that you typically see is a wheel marking gauge and that's you know, typically a metal rod with a, a conical wheel at the end of it. There is another gauge called a mortise gauge that's used for marking mortise and tenon joinery. It has two conical pins and those can be adjusted independently of the head. So what you would typically do is take your mortise chisel and set the distance between those pins to match the chisel and then uh, you would set the head to get the correct distance from the, you know, the face of a board in order to mark your tenon or your mortise. Most of these gauges, the, the newer ones at least, and the inexpensive ones, when you adjust the, the width or the distance between the pins, that dimension isn't locked in place. So, so when you're then adjusting the head, it tends to move those pins around a little bit. Now, of course, you know, a good, ba good gauge uh, will lock the pins relative to each other. So I wanted to take the gauge that I had built previously and make a mortise gauge. So what I've done is I've got, you know, of course, a separate piece here, nothing new about that, but I came up with a device that locks these in place. And I have to admit, it took me a while to figure this out. It looks simple now, but, but it was not simple to come up with. So anyway, once, once this inner beam is set, there's a, there's a pin here and it's got a, a notch in it. So it just it essentially wedges that in place. So when that's pushed up, that doesn't move. And the nice thing about it is very compact. It doesn't take up much room. It's easy to use. And then, like I said, once, once that is set, now I can move the head independently. It doesn't change that setting. I would, you know, center that or however I want to set it, lock that in place. And now I'm good to go for marking my joinery. So I'll show you now how I make this. The head for the mortise gauge is the same as the head for the regular marking gauge. So I'm not going to cover how I do that. You can watch the other video to see that. The beam is also similar. Uh, you know, it's 5-8 square, but I need to you know, create the groove for this other piece to slide in here. So right now, I've just milled this to about 5 16 square. You know, I typically, because you know, narrow pieces tend to warp, kind of work down to that dimension. So this is nice and straight right now. Uh, once I get the groove cut in this piece, I'll cut the maple one to match. And I should say, you want a pretty hard piece of wood for this just to give it some strength because, you know, we're going to be putting a pin in the end of it and uh, that extra strength is going to be helpful. So I'm going to uh, route a slot in here to within about, I don't know, three eighths to a half an inch from the end. On the end of the beam, you know, one end typically gets chewed up when you're creating the head. Uh, I'm coming in from either side the same amount so that I know exactly where the middle is. And then I'll use those marks to make sure that I'm, I'm centered on the router bit. I've got a quarter inch bit in here and I've got the flutes of the bit so they're perpendicular to my fence and I'll now adjust the fence so that those marks are aligned with the bit. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but the closer, the closer, the better. So that looks pretty good. The bit is raised to the height of my middle piece here. 
So I've actually got it slightly lower. So once it's installed, I'm going to you know plane this flush with the uh, with the beam. So that's set correctly. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust my fence here so that if I turn this 90 degrees again, so now the flutes are parallel to the fence. I'm going to adjust these edges so they align with the bit. So as I cut, I'll know where the bit stops and starts and I'll know where to stop my cut. I've got this adjusted now so that you know that's the beginning of the cut. That's the end of the cut. If you don't have a fence like this, I would draw pencil lines on the fence to, to show that. And I actually only need this end of the cut to show. So what's going to happen is I'll come in, stop at that point. Now I'm going to be using a push stick, so it's going to be hard to see or impossible to see that line. So I'm going to set a stop over here so that I stop at the right spot. I'm going to use my table saw to rip this to width. I want to cut it so that the growth rings are vertical on here. If I have that choice, which I do, I'm not sure if that shows up, but uh, that will, you know, a small number probably doesn't really matter, but, but that means I've got a quarter sawn piece. It's going to expand, you know, across the width a little less than it would if I went the other direction. I also, I'm, I'm looking here and I've got a, a slight gap here. So this piece is slightly concave right now. If I was to put it this way, the edges or the ends would be against the fence. And I can't keep them against the fence if I cut it this direction. So I'm going to cut this so that the concave side is against the fence because now I really only have to hold it in the middle to keep it against the fence. And the, the concavity keeps these ends tight. So that works out nicely. Sometimes it's actually better if the piece is a little bit warped, you know, assuming it's flexible enough that you can uh, hold it there. So I'm going to make a cut. I've got this set slightly bigger than a quarter. Uh, you know, I want to kind of sneak up on it. So I'll make a couple of cuts here or whatever it takes to get that to fit nicely in my slot. So I've got this, this fitting nicely now. It fits in there. It might be just a touch snug, but that's okay. I'll, I'll maybe sand that or take a uh, hand plane pass on one edge of that. Now, before I you know, round the end of this, I'm a little concerned, you know, I'm going to be putting a, a pin through here that's a pretty tight fit, and this could crack easily, I think. So I want to reinforce that a bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a couple of saw cuts here, and then I'm going to glue in a couple of pieces of veneer here with the grain going, you know, uh, perpendicular to this grain. And I think that's going to help keep that from splitting. Now, if you don't have some veneer laying around, uh, you know, this could be the off cut from, you know, a small piece on the table saw or, or you know, something to that effect. You could maybe even just glue some paper in there or some cardboard. But uh, this, this works well. I did on the last one. I've never had any issues with it. It's the next day, the glue has dried on my uh, reinforcement there, so I'm just going to trim these off. Next, I'm going to round the end of this so it fits nicely in there. So, Okay, that, that fits nicely. 
So next, I'm going to drill the holes in here for the pins. I drilled a series of holes in here and kept flipping this around to make sure that I was uh, as close to centered as possible on the beam. Now this is a, an off cut, this is a scrap piece. So I've got this one ready to go. I've laid these out as accurately as possible with a marking knife. The holes are going to be a quarter inch apart, which is the smallest chisel that I have. If for some reason I need to get them a little bit closer together, I can sand a little bit off the end of this piece. So I want to make sure that, you know, they're both centered, but what's even more important is they're both the same distance from one edge. Because, of course, when I use this, as I roll this down into the workpiece, the the pins need to be the same distance away so they hit at the same time. So I'm just going to drill these. This this bit, these little bits are kind of flexible. So, you know, I've, I've dimpled these just a touch just to further uh, help the accuracy. Okay, so of course, you know, one of these holes needs to go all the way through. The other one just goes through the, the center of piece here. Next, we need to make the locking mechanism for the center part of the beam. So I've taken uh, this one apart. You can see the hole there is, is pretty much, you know, tangent to this center part of the beam here. And then it you know, comes out over here. I've laid it out on the one I'm making. So I've got the hole starting, you know, right next to the, uh, the seam there. And I want it to go through the, you know, maybe a, th a third to a quarter of the, of the pin. You can see here's the pin once it's installed in there. So that uh, angle is, I measured, it's about eight degrees. So I've got it uh, laid out. I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole. Now, I'm using a, a 532nd diameter dowel, uh, which is not a standard size. You could probably use an eighth inch. I just thought that was a little bit on the small side. So I've made this dowel. I will, uh, I, th I think I have a video on how I made it. I will uh, show that. But anyway, so so this should work fine. It's just a nice size for this. Like I said, an eighth is a little small. Three sixteenths is a little big. You know, this is kind of the sweet spot. So I need to drill this at an eight degree angle. I have this a fixture that I created when I was teaching the class, you can see, so it's got this eight degree angle on it. So I'll, I'll set this on here and, uh, you know, align it and uh, drill through there. I've got my jig on here. I've got this clamped in place. Now I, you know, I'd left all the pieces long, so I've cut the, the primary beam to length. It's, I think it's eight and a half inches. Came in about three quarters of an inch from the end. I've got the center beam clamped in place here, and it's really long, so I'm just going to you know, drill into it a little bit here. So I've got this aligned, so I'm coming in you know, just tangent to that hole or pretty close to it, so I think I'm in good shape here. Okay, so that all looks good. You can see I just started just barely at the edge of that. So I think that's going to work well. I switched to another dowel here, same diameter. I just, this is maple. So I'm going to slide this in here. It's a touch sloppier than I'd like, but I think it'll be okay. And I'm going to, if I can hold that underneath there, I need to trim the dowel flush with, you know, this surface here. So I think I'll go back and forth here a little bit between that and this. 
And ideally those cuts are 90 degrees to each other, the angled cut and this. So I'll continue to, to get that until that's pretty clean and then we'll try a test fit and then we'll cut it to length. Now I've got the parts in here trying to test fit this. So that, if I push that down, that locks it. But what I'm finding is when I lift it up, there's not a lot of, of uh, looseness there, whatever. So I need to cut this notch back a little bit more. Okay, so that, that seems to work pretty well. So there's locked. Oh, that's, yeah, so I have just a little bit of movement there. So unlocked, that moves easily, and then there's locked. Unlocked, locked. Okay, I think that's good. So I'll, I'll cut this, you know, so it sticks out maybe a quarter inch on either side. Before I put the pins in the beams, I want to do one last step here. And that is I need to get uh, the inner beam and the primary beam flush with each other. So they're pretty close right now. Uh, apparently very close because yeah, I'm getting a, a shaving off, off both of them there. So that that feels good. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to take one more pass here so that when I lock, you know, I've got, I've got the uh, pins set and I go ahead and lock this, it will squeeze on the center beam and really lock it in place. You know, not, not hit quite as hard on the, on the primary beam here. So one, one pass here. I'm looking inside there. I can see two, two different shavings. So, so now when I put this in, yeah, it's just sticking out, you know, a few thousandths more and that'll just help lock it uh, in place. So I've got the uh, pins here, you know, one's a regular length, uh, the other one I cut down so it uh, you know, f fits within uh, the middle beam. So I'll put those together and uh, then I'll show you how to put this pin in because that's actually a little bit uh, tricky. This pin, I put it in and then compared the two to each other to make sure they're out the same amount. And this one was a touch on the loose side, so I put a drop of CA glue in there and I think that'll hold it. Notice too, I left this a little long, so, so you've got something to grab onto when you're uh, adjusting it. Okay, everything's fitting together now. I've got the head on. Everything seems to work okay, assuming I loosen that up. So that's working good. So I just need to put in the uh, the pin that locks the center beam in place. So I've got the head all the way forward, and I'm going to put this in a vise. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bend that up so that uh, I can slide this pin in. Of course, the, the, the little flat is facing down, so that should go like that. That looks good. So I think this is good to go. So let's try it out on this piece of uh, wood here. I've got it set up for maybe a 5 sixteenths mortise and tenon. And I did have to, I, try, I did try it briefly, uh, I had to uh, move one of the pins out a little bit so that they were both marking 
at the same time. So that's looking good. Now, you know, I don't want to flip it that way. I want to flip it this way so I still have the same reference. There we go. So I don't know if that shows up, but that's leaving some nice nice clean lines on there. So I think we're good to go. This, uh, this should be really helpful if you're doing uh, mortise and tenon.